We often get this question, why do we have Southern urbanism in the title and what does that refer to? And of course, the first instinct is that people think we have a geographical territory in mind, uh, so everything outside of the West. Um, that's maybe part of the story, but it's only a part of the story in the sense that that captures where the majority of urban dwellers in the world live and where they will, of course, be um, where urban areas will be growing in the next uh, 30 to 40 years. So we know that all future urban growth, or 95% of it, will be in Asia and Africa between now and 2050. So that's significant, and it happens at a moment that the world economy is changing, we're understanding environmental limits, and that we know that the way in which we've conceptualized and experienced cities is just not an option for the future. So really understanding that contextual relevance is key, that's one piece. But the other part is really a theoretical move. It is to suggest that what we've inherited as a canon in terms of what is urban studies and urban theory is in fact not an abstract thing, that it is a highly contextual thing that speaks to a specific experience of modernity in, uh, uh, in particularly Europe, but in Europe, America. And even though that body of knowledge has always paraded as universal, it is in fact highly contextual. And so what we're trying to do is to also unpick what are the theoretical underpinnings of that approach and to suggest that there's a different way of thinking about urban theory and that that's the, the spirit of that is in a way, um, in, if we want to give it a political label, it's about that southern critique. It's a critique from the global south about the universality of that knowledge. So in, in other words, as one, it's an empirical reference point and secondly, it's also, if you will, a philosophical gesture.